Hey there, fellow spook seekers, welcome to our channel where the unexplained becomes reality. Today we're cracking open the dusty, cobweb-ridden book of ghost stories. These are the real deal, ripped from the headlines of history and whispered in hushed tones. So grab your salt circles, your holy water, whatever you need to feel safe because we're about to dive headfirst into the chilling world of the supernatural. Let's do this. Our first stop on this paranormal road trip takes us to Adams, Tennessee, home to the Bell Witch. This entity was straight up malevolent. Imagine the worst roommate you've ever had, multiply that by a thousand, then add some spectral powers and a penchant for violence. The story goes that this malicious spirit blamed for the death of John Bell himself, tormented the Bell family for years. We're talking physical assaults, disembodied voices, and just general creepy shenanigans. The Bell Witch story is one of the most well-documented hauntings in American history, with countless witnesses claiming to have experienced its wrath firsthand. Some say the witch was the vengeful spirit of a woman named Kate Batts, who believed John Bell had wronged her. Whatever the truth may be, the legend of the Bell Witch continues to send chills down spines to this day. From the American South, we travel across the pond to good old England, where the Tower of London stands as a silent sentinel to centuries of history and horror. It's within those ancient walls that we encounter our next spectral celebrity, Anne Boleyn, the ill-fated queen of Henry VIII. Accused of treason and adultery, she lost her head at the hands of her own husband. But death, it seems, wasn't the end for Anne. Her restless spirit is said to roam the tower, forever bound to the sight of her demise. Over the years there have been countless sightings of Anne's ghost, often described as a forlorn figure in white, gliding through the tower's corridors. Some have even reported seeing her on Christmas Day, wandering the chapel where she's buried. Imagine being a guard, making your rounds on a foggy London night, when you spot a figure out of the corner of your eye. Hold on to your hats, folks, because we're about to dive into one of the most infamous and debated hauntings in modern history, the Amityville Horror. Picture this. December 1975, a quaint Dutch colonial house in Amityville, New York, becomes the scene of a horrific mass murder. Ronald DeFeo Jr. shoots and kills six members of his family in their sleep. A year later, the Lutz family moves into the house, hoping for a fresh start. From the moment they step foot inside, they're met with a barrage of paranormal activity. Imagine the overwhelming stench of rotting flesh despite the house being thoroughly cleaned. Imagine swarms of flies in the dead of winter, they're buzzing a constant reminder that something is deeply wrong. The Lutz family's experiences were so terrifying that they fled the house after only 28 days, leaving behind their belongings and a chilling tale. Our next stop takes us to the grand estate of Raynham Hall in Norfolk, England, where a spectral resident known as the Brown Lady has been terrifying guests and staff for centuries. The Brown Lady is said to be the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole, sister of the first British Prime Minister, Robert Walpole. Legend has it that Dorothy was caught having an affair and was subsequently locked away in her room until her death. But Dorothy wasn't content to fade away quietly. No, she decided to stick around and make her presence known, becoming one of the most famous ghosts in British folklore. In 1936, two photographers for Country Life magazine were tasked with capturing the beauty of Raynham Hall. Little did they know they'd capture something far more eerie. Next up we're heading to the breathtaking Rocky Mountains to visit the Stanley Hotel. You might recognize this grand old hotel as the inspiration for Stephen King's The Shining. Built in 1909 the Stanley Hotel has seen its fair share of guests both living and, well, not so much. From the moment it opened its doors there have been whispers of strange occurrences, unexplained noises, and ghostly apparitions. One of the most active spots in the hotel is said to be room 217 where a former housekeeper named Elizabeth Wilson met her untimely demise. Guests have reported all sorts of strange happenings in that room, from flickering lights to disembodied voices to the feeling of being tucked into bed by unseen hands. But Elizabeth isn't the only permanent resident of the Stanley. There's also the mischievous spirit of Lord Dunraven, the hotel's original owner, who's been known to play pranks on guests and staff alike. Hold on to your skepticism, folks, because we're about to enter the chaotic and controversial world 
of the Enfield poltergeist. This case, which unfolded in Enfield, England in the late 1970s, is not for the faint of heart. It's a story of furniture moving on its own, disembodied voices, and a young girl seemingly possessed by a malevolent entity. Imagine being an 11-year-old girl, just trying to live your life when suddenly, your world is turned upside down by an unseen force. This is what happened to Janet Hodgson, who became the unwilling target of the Enfield poltergeist. The events at Enfield drew the attention of paranormal investigators, the media, and even skeptics, all eager to witness the strange phenomena firsthand. Some dismissed it as a hoax, a desperate cry for attention from a troubled family, but others, including seasoned investigators, were convinced that something truly sinister was at play. Get ready to step into a world of architectural oddities and restless spirits as we explore the Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. This sprawling mansion with its twisting hallways, staircases to nowhere and doors that open to brick walls, isn't just a house. It's an enigma wrapped in a riddle, shrouded in a ghostly veil. Sarah Winchester, the wealthy widow of William Winchester, the rifle magnate, became convinced that she was cursed by the spirits of those killed by her husband's firearms. Desperate to appease these vengeful spirits, Sarah consulted a medium who advised her to build, build, build. And build she did for 38 years without any architectural plans, resulting in the sprawling 160-room labyrinth we see today. But the Winchester Mystery House isn't just strange, it's said to be teeming with paranormal activity. Visitors and staff have reported hearing footsteps in the dead of night, doors slamming shut on their own, and cold spots that send shivers down your spine. Some say that Sarah Winchester herself still roams the halls of her bizarre creation, searching for peace amongst the chaos she built. Now we find ourselves in St. Francisville, Louisiana, home to one of the most actively haunted locations in the American South, the Myrtles Plantation. This grand old mansion, dripping with southern charm and shrouded in moss-draped oaks, has a history as rich as it is unsettling. Built in 1796, the Myrtles Plantation has seen its fair share of love, loss, and tragedy. One of the most famous residents of the Myrtles is Chloe, a slave who, according to legend, had her ear cut off by the plantation owner after being caught eavesdropping. As the story goes, Chloe got her revenge by baking a poisoned birthday cake, but her plan backfired and only two members of the family died. Chloe was then hanged by her fellow slaves who feared retribution. Today, Chloe is said to roam the plantation, her spirit tethered to the place of her demise. Visitors and staff have reported seeing a woman in a green turban peering out from windows, objects moving mysteriously and even feeling a cold hand on their shoulder when no one's around. Hold on to your steering wheels, folks, because we're about to hit the road, with one of the most famous hitchhiking ghosts in history, Resurrection Mary of Chicago, Illinois. This tragic tale revolves around a young woman, Mary, who, in the 1930s, met an untimely end after a night out dancing at the O. Henry Ballroom. Imagine a cold, moonless night, the air thick with fog. You're driving down Archer Avenue when you spot a young woman in a white dress, her thumb extended, her eyes pleading for a ride. According to legend, Mary asks to be let out near Resurrection Cemetery, where she vanishes into thin air, leaving behind only a sense of unease and the lingering scent of her perfume. Some believe that Mary is searching for her boyfriend, who abandoned her after a fight on that fateful night. Others claim she's trying to get back to the ballroom, forever frozen in time, her final dance unfinished. And for our final destination on this ghostly road trip, we're venturing into the crumbling ruins of the Waverly Hills Sanatorium in Louisville, Kentucky. This once-renowned tuberculosis hospital, now abandoned and shrouded in an unsettling silence, is considered one of the most haunted locations in America. Built in 1910, Waverly Hills was a beacon of hope for tuberculosis patients, a place where they could receive treatment and hopefully recover from the deadly disease. However, with limited medical knowledge at the time, the death toll at Waverly Hills was staggering. Visitors and paranormal investigators have reported all manner of chilling encounters, from disembodied voices and footsteps to full-bodied apparitions and unexplained shadows lurking at the edge of their vision. There's the story of Timmy, a young boy who loved to play with his red ball, said to still roam the halls, his laughter echoing through the empty corridors. And then there's room 502, 
where a pregnant nurse allegedly hanged herself after contracting tuberculosis. Well, there you have it brave souls. 10 real ghost stories that are sure to make you think twice about turning off the lights tonight. Did any of these tales send shivers down your spine? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed these terrifying tales, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for more spine-chilling content. Sweet dreams.